So I've played Destiny 2 on and off since day one of release. I've put thousands of hours into this game, and one of the biggest criticisms I've always had of Destiny 2 is the very shallow RPG systems, more importantly, the very shallow RPG customization of your character and of your play style and gameplay. I'm a big fan of more deep RPG systems, and to give Destiny 2 credit, it has spent its more recent years going a lot more deep deep into its RPG systems. Going from static to random rolled weapons, the armor overhaul that now allows you to have a bunch of different mods in every one of your armor pieces, then going into the subclass overhauls that now allows you to have a bunch of different pieces of customization with all of your different subclasses, which when you put together all of these different systems, you actually have the opportunity to make some interesting builds. And while all of these changes have been making the game much more interesting in terms of RPG customization, the new systems coming with the Final Shape expansion are going to put this into overdrive. And the largest of these new additions being a new subclass called Prismatic, which is essentially adding multi-classing into Destiny 2. So Prismatic is going to be a new subclass for all of the different classes in Destiny 2 that's going to allow you to mix and match elements and abilities from all of the other subclasses in the game. So you'll be able to have a a solar grenade with a void melee ability and you'll just be able to mix and match all of these different elements to create some of the most ridiculous combinations. Now you're not just going to be combining different elements from all of the other subclasses willy-nilly because there's also an element of balancing out light and darkness in this new subclass through the new transcendent system which is a new element specific to the prismatic subclass. And this is going to be shown as two new colored bars under your ultimate. One's going to be a light bar, one's going to be a darkness bar. And as you use different abilities and deal damage with light abilities or darkness abilities, these bars will fill up. And when both of these bars are filled, you can enter Transcendence. Now, when you enter Transcendence, your melee and grenade energy will be instantly refreshed and dealing damage with your grenade or your melee will increase the generation of each other and your weapon damage will be slightly increased. And in addition to all of those buffs we outlined, you'll also be getting a new grenade when you're in Transcendence depending on what class you're playing. So a hunter will get a Hailfire Strike, which you throw a device charged with Stasis Matter and Solar Energy, so it's a Solar slash Stasis Grenade. This will attach to surfaces or targets. It'll erupt into a slowing storm. Then after a short duration, the device will ignite, creating a Scorching Cyclone. So you basically throw this grenade, it sticks to somebody, makes a slowing storm, then ignites into a fiery tornado. Then for the Titan, you have Electrified Snare, throw an explosive device, energized with strand matter and arc energy that detonates into a supercharged suspending burst. The suspended targets take heavy damage over time and chains jolting lightning to nearby enemies. So you basically throw a grenade, it explodes, suspends everything, and then causes a bunch of chains of lightning to just bounce around between them all. And then finally, we have a freezing singularity for the warlock. You throw a mass of void energy and stasis matter. On impact, it deploys a miniature black hole orbited by a halo of slowing ice. After a short duration, the black hole implodes, suppressing and dealing heavy damage. So you're basically throwing this void black hole that has an outer ring that slows all enemies. So enemies within this are going to have a really difficult time getting out of it, but before it blows up, it does a bunch of damage and suppresses everything. And all of these elements we just went over are tied into the transcendent system with the prismatic subclass. This isn't even accounting for all of the other customization you're going to have with just choosing what different abilities you want to combine together. Now, just to set expectations, you're not going to have 100% of the options of all of the other subclasses to combine in prismatic. So there's only going to be a certain amount of supers, melee abilities, grenade abilities, and aspects that you're going to be able to combine in your prismatic subclass. You will 
be able to use all of the class abilities or movement abilities for all of the subclasses of that class, but everything else you're going to only have certain options. And we do seemingly have the information of all of the different things that are going to be applicable to the prismatic subclasses. So you'll be able to see those in this video, but I did want to go over all of these super options for all of these subclasses. So starting off, we have the Hunter, and you'll be able to use Storm's Edge, Golden Gun Marksman, Silence and Squall, Silk Strike, and Shadow Shot Deadfall. And interestingly enough, you do have access to Shadow Shot Deadfall, which I think is one of the most important group play supers in the game. So it is quite interesting that Hunters have access to this in Prismatic, because this isn't the case with one of the other classes. And then we have the Titan, who has Twilight Arsenal, Thunder Crash, Blade Fury, Hammer of Soul, and Glacial Quake. I think Titans did get a lot of their most iconic supers. But then we have Warlocks, who get Song of Flame, Nova Bomb Cataclysm, Storm Storm Trance, Winter's Wrath, and Needlestorm. And as you may have realized, Warlocks are missing one very important super in a Well of Radiance. Well of Radiance obviously being probably the most important super in the game, especially for group play. And I think this is probably a way for Bungie to nerf Well of Radiance without actually nerfing it, because everybody's going to be playing Prismatic, and Warlocks just aren't going to have access to it. So in a lot of the gameplay of the final shape, you won't be seeing near as many Wells of Radiance. And Prismatic is getting a pretty big upgrade in terms of progression compared to Stasis and Strand. Because from starting the first mission of the final shape, you'll have a full build of options as starting elements of Prismatic to use just right from the jump. So you'll have a handful of super options, class ability options, movement options, melee options, grenade options, and aspects that you'll get as starting elements to Prismatic. And this is going to feel much better than having these super weak subclasses like you had at, say, the start of Strand, where you're just super weak and you have to go farm a bunch of currency to actually make a usable subclass. And not only will you be getting this starting selection to choose between, but unlocking all of the other abilities, aspects, and fragments are going to be much more simple and straightforward. You're going to be obtaining all of the other elements of Prismatic from mission rewards, as well as unlocking them through post-campaign quests and as collectibles hidden in the world. So if you go out in the world and you find one of these hidden collectibles and say loot a chest, you'll just get a ability unlock or a fragment unlock instead of getting some currency that you have to keep farming up to then go spend currency on unlocking one of the abilities. And one of the nicest quality of life features is that unlocking something on one class unlocks it for all of the other classes. And I think actually looking at the charts they release showing all of the different options of prismatic for all the classes allows you to visualize this much more easily. So they have all the different sections, your supers, class abilities, movement modes, melee abilities, grenades abilities, and aspects all lined up in this chart. So for instance, if you unlock the first square, that will unlock the first square of all of the different classes. So if you completely unlock everything for say a warlock, and then you want to go play a titan, your titan will also have everything. That's just a massive quality of life feature that's just going to make Prismatic so much more enjoyable to progress through. Now, the final piece of the Prismatic subclass is going to be your aspects and fragments. And there's going to be a pretty big change, which is going to specifically allow you to have a lot more fragments than you would normally have with the other subclasses. This is primarily to help solve the problem of needing a lot more combinations to make Prismatic as strong as the other subclasses. So for most of the aspects for Prismatic, you're going to have three fragment slots to play around with, with only a handful of the most potent options staying at two fragment slots. So this is just going to give you a lot more options to mix and match, which I also think is probably where a lot of the power is actually going to come from for Prismatic. And then on top of that, there's going to be a lot more fragments to choose between and progress into. So you're going to have 21 total fragments compared to the usual 14 to 16 that other subclasses get 
access to. So you're just going to be able to use a lot more fragments and then you're going to have a selection of a lot more fragments, just giving you so many more build possibilities and combinations. And we did get a handful of some of these fragments and you can kind of see a lot of them having two different elements to them. For instance, Facet of Balance, rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy, rapidly defeating targets with dark energy grants grenade energy. Then we have Facet of Bravery, defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds to your void weapons, defeating targets with power to melee final blows grants unraveling rounds to your strand weapons. And you'll definitely be seeing this through a lot of the fragments, having these two different elements of play in two different parts of Prismatic, usually being a light element and dark element, which will also allow you to just build up your transcendence meter more easily through these fragments. And I think that's a decent overview of the Prismatic subclass coming to Destiny 2, but that's not all that's adding more RPG depth and customization with the final shape, because there's also new exotic class items coming with the final shape that are specifically going to be tied to the Prismatic subclass. Now, these exotic class items are actually going to allow you to mix and match two different exotic powers from other exotics throughout the game. Now, the exotic powers on this class item are also going to be randomly rolled. So this is going to add a massive amount of chase items to try to go and get, because there could be two different exotic powers you're looking for, and you may get one of those exotic powers on 12 different items, the other exotic power you're looking for on 12 different items. So there's a possibility that you're searching for the perfect combination for quite a long time. And obviously having basically two exotic powers is going to be incredibly strong, but it's even going to be more crazy when you realize you can get exotic powers from other classes. So if you're on a warlock, you could be getting exotic powers from a titan and you could mix and match a titan exotic power with a warlock exotic power. So it's not only just two exotic powers, it's exotic powers from all classes that you can combine, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now we did get a small glimpse into a few of them and it does seem like they're not going to be exact one-to-one -one copies of other exotics. Most likely a lot of them are going to be powered down in some way, but even if it's a lesser version of other exotics, just the fact that you can combine two of them, I think is still going to make them much stronger than just having one exotic. But again, these are only going to be for the prismatic subclass. So that's definitely going to be another way in which they can balance these items because they're not going to be usable for all of the other subclasses. And while everybody's been ultra hyped for the prismatic subclass itself, I think these exotic class items are actually going to be more interesting when it comes to build creation. And I also think that these exotic class items and smashing together two exotic perks from exotic armor pieces from all classes is actually going to be the most broken part of the prismatic subclass. I think there's probably going to be a handful of different combinations that just basically break the game. I would be very surprised if there are not exotic combinations that are just disabled within the first couple weeks of the final shape. So adding together the new prismatic subclass with these new exotic class items, I think there is a lot of RPG depth being added into Destiny 2. And I'm very interested to see how the future of Destiny 2 looks after prismatic is released, because the vast majority of players are just going to be using prismatic after the expansion is released. And if prismatic just isn't super weak, everybody's just going to continue to use these. Why would you use any other subclasses when you could combine elements of all subclasses and have two exotic perks instead of one? There's just so much more combinations. The gameplay is going to be so much more interesting, so much more different, and there's just going to be a lot more build crafting based around the prismatic subclass than there could be with any of the other subclasses. So I would not be surprised if at some point in the future, Destiny 2 just basically goes full multi-classing, where subclass don't really matter anymore, you can just combine whatever you want. Because after they open this door with Prismatic, there's going to be no closing it. And I would be very surprised if the vast majority of the player base are all playing Prismatic for the foreseeable future. But that's all I want to go over. So thanks for watching.